Hi, I'm Ron Polk, designer of the Polk Workbench. Today is just a quick update to answer a few questions on the new saw stop uh, job site saw. In a previous video, I received the new saw and unboxed it and gave you my first impressions. I've had a few months now to use it on a few jobs and put it uh, to work. And I get a lot of emails asking about what I think about the saw. So I thought, even though I'm planning on doing some more in-depth stuff with it, testing the, the, the uh, blade stop feature with some uh, wet woods and uh, working with uh, shutting that down for cutting uh, wet materials when I know they're wet or metals. Uh, this today is just to kind of talk about, you know, my impressions now that I've been using it for a while. So overall, I give it an A+. This is the saw that I'm sticking with. It's what I'm going to be using uh, on all of my projects. The saw itself is a really high quality saw. It's well made. Uh, the fence, the table, uh, the motor, the blade, uh, everything about it is uh, fine-tuned. I'm liking the cuts I'm getting with it. I'm liking the power that it has to cut through the materials. I like the accuracy and the easy uh, adjustability of the fence. I like the, the ergonomics of it. The fence has a nice uh, storage area holster that it slips right in and there's a, a small lock that catches it. Tucks it out of the way so that when I'm storing it, um, flipping it up on its base, uh, that doesn't get in the way. There's also storage underneath for the uh, push stick. I've added an optional piece that you see here. This is a, a um, dust collector for the top of the saw. Any table saw is gonna have its heavy dust from the bottom, which I have the vacuum hooked to that, but then I have an additional hose uh, hooked to this. Uh, one of the questions I had was, does it work with the uh, auto starts on the vacuums? And it does. Uh, somebody, I think I read a comment somewhere that it didn't work, but I have mine plugged into my Festool vacuum. When I turn it on, you can hear the vacuum shutting off there. The things I like about the saw is how easy it is to um, make adjustments or changes to it. So if I want to uh, remove this dust guard, if I've got a project, uh, if I'm doing my uh, cross-cut sled or I've got a project where I can't have the blade guard on, it comes off without any tools. So I just remove the throat plate, which also just comes out with a uh, there's a lock that you just slip your finger in and push and then you know that comes right off and then if I want to remove this all I have to do is flip a lever and that pops right off. Changing the blade does take two wrenches there they come with the saw and they're mounted on the back with an area to uh, store extra blades. The mechanism that will stop the blade is removable without tools and it just uh, snaps in. There's a, a flip up knob, a pin that comes out. And then the mechanism just slides off and it has uh, these electronic pins that you see when you're putting it in. So that's the mechanism. This is a, a, once, a one use, um, if, if it's ever tripped, this has destroyed the aluminum uh, and the blade fused together. Uh, so the blade is destroyed and this is destroyed, but you just purchase extra of these and another blade and remove the blade and this as one unit. Beneath the surface of the table, there's a toolbox and there's uh, instructions on turning it off and on. If you want to disable the stop, there's a, a certain uh, protocol you go through to do that. And that's very clearly laid out here. And then in the toolbox, they've included a really nice, easy to follow, well-written manual that's made with this thick uh, coated paper. So it's, it's going to stand the uh, 
test of time. And then it has the blade guard that comes with it. And then this is removable by pulling, no tools, and it pops off. And then you have the riving knife, which you can use as well as the anti-kickback paws as well. And then this can come off, the kickback paws can come off without any tools. And it's just a matter of latching the spring And so they've, they've thought out, I mean, all the little parts and pieces are done really well. And the fence is a really well-made fence. It's got uh, these uh, plastic applications on the side, which help for when you're pushing the material through. It's got a single contact point being on this outside edge, which uh, you can square that up and adjust the pointer so it's... Uh, you know, a, a precise cut. I haven't had to adjust mine. It came um, from the factory. Maybe I was fortunate, but um, where I set it, that's the cut I get. And the lock is just this easy push button. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it keeps parallel very nicely there. If, because it's not attached on the backside, it makes it easier to take off and on and make the adjustment. There is some deflection if you push on that, but if you're a carpenter in real world, you know that that does not impact your cut. So most of my cutting is done with just the narrower cut. But if I, if I happen to get in a situation where I do want a wider cut, then it's just a matter of flipping this lever, moving the rails all the way out until they stop. You don't stop midway, you go all the way out and that's what calibrates the tape for your wider cuts, which go out to 26 inches. And then lock it down. And then your fence, there's, there's a double scale, a red scale and a black scale. And so then at that point, you would start reading the uh, red scale, which then I could take it out to 26 inches. Now that leaves a bit of a gap here, airspace here, where if I'm using a, wide, uh, a wider cut and the, the fence is in that space, then the material could you know, tip down. So what they've done is they've created this uh, lip that just with the twist of a knob comes out and then to go back to the narrower cuts you slide it all the way back so there's only two positions all the way down or all the way out and that keeps your tape calibrated another element that I really appreciate compared to my DeWalt is getting the blade up and down it takes only one turn to go from all the way up to all the way down and it's a very smooth mechanism very easy uh, to move it up and down it feels a lot more like a cabinet saw that i had in my shop like my uh when i had a couple of powermatic 66s i just i feel closer to that with this saw than any of the portable saws i've had but in my workflow i can't use a cabinet saw or a big sliding saw i do half or more of my work on site so I either have to have a full portable set and a shop set or make my portable set work in both applications, which is what I've chosen to do. The other thing I like is to tip the blade. There's a disc behind the, the crank to make it go up and down. There's a disc, you just squeeze on it and you just rotate it. And there's a nice, easy to read scale with a nice pointer so you can see right where you're, right where you're putting it. Pull that disc and slide it back and forth and it's very smooth and it locks right in when you let go of that disc. You don't have to tighten anything down. It just locks right in. Another question I've been asked is about hanging the saw off my bench the way that I did with the DeWalt. So at this point, I haven't explored any options to hang it off of the bench. I may do that in the future, but I just haven't had a need on the jobs that I've been on and working here in the shop. Because this is a bigger, heavier saw than I've been using, um, lifting it up, would become a little more tedious and their 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 system for uh, storing it is uh, so well built and so easy to use there's there's a a lever that you put your foot on it's got a, a picture of a lock on it and then all I have to do is tip it it locks and I'm ready to roll it into my trailer. At this point, I'm thinking I'm gonna stick with their stand. I really like how easy it is to use and move the saw around. 
Again, I just push the lever with my foot to unlock it, and all I have to do is tip it, and it locks, and that's it. And once it's in that position, it's easy for me to come around, grab this side, and roll it around the job, you know, like this, and I can get it right where I want it. The other adjustment I had to make on my bench was where the um, miter gauge goes. Of course, I use that for other tools, shop-made tools. Uh, I needed them to be able to go past and they would bump into the bench. So I had these uh, routed out um, you know, sections or dados on my bench that would line up. Well, these are slightly different than my DeWalt. So what I did was just widen them. I just took my router and I just made them a little wider. So now they would work both on the DeWalt and on this. I still have my smaller one on the uh, total station, but even the total station is adjusted to the right height of this. And if you saw my video series on putting in crown molding, uh, I used this saw with the total station and it worked really well. So that's kind of a quick overview of where I'm at with this saw today. I am going to keep it. It is going to uh, be my main and probably only table saw. Being that it works with the total station, the smaller DeWalt uh, will probably find a new home here pretty soon and I may even pick up a second one of these. I do like having two saws uh, when I'm uh, in the production mode and I, I do a lot of uh, dado stacking. Um, I like having a second saw so I can set up a dado stack and, and still be able to rip. If you like these tool review videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like them and share them with others. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.